This is The 21st Show. I'm Brian Mackey. And the instrument you're hearing there is called a theremin. Well, also a piano, of course, but, but the one that is standing out to you is a theremin. More on that in a moment. But for now, all you need to understand, it is one of only two instruments you can play without actually touching it. The other one is, well, of course, your voice. As a listener, it's not a common instrument, and it's even less common to meet someone who actually plays one. But my next guest plays the theremin professionally. Joy Yang is a, I don't know, what's the term, thereminist and a pianist. Uh, She's also the founder of the Interdisciplinary Institute in Urbana. She joins me now in studio. Joy, welcome to the 21st Show. Thank you so much, Brian. It's such an honor to be here with you today. Well, we're so glad you're with us. uh, And we're looking forward to a live theremin performance a little later in our conversation. But I want to begin by asking, how did you first get into music? Well, (laughs) I started playing piano at the age of four years old in Johannesburg, South Africa. Oh, wow. And um, talk about that. Were you... uh, Take were you were you an enthusiastic student or were you like my kids where you had to be sort of forced to practice? <laughs> Let's say my p- parents gave me the opportunity to learn the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, d- did you play? Uh, wh- how did you how did you grow beyond? Uh, or talk about your piano background, right? Were you doing competitions? Were you playing in school bands? Anything like that? Yes, certainly. I I went through many piano teachers, um, starting in Johannesburg, South Africa, um, during my time in China. And eventually, when I grew up in Sydney, Australia, um, I've had, you know, over 20 piano teachers in my life. I've done plenty of competitions and concerts, recitals. And um, I think I really started loving the piano when I met one of my influential teachers, Nita Morn A.M., Um, at the age of 15, and she really transformed um, my piano playing into a love for music. Oh, say more about that. What do you mean by that? Well, um, you know, I've been really technically proficient and trained, but I think um, when I met Miss Morn, that was when I started learning more about music as a culture, as a way of life, Mm. and um, more about performance, and she really helped guide me into the stage of choosing music as my career. When did you start to think of it as something that you could do as a career? Or had that always been in the back of your mind? Or maybe your parents' mind? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, actually, I wanted to be many things growing up. I used to want to be a fashion designer, an actress, and uh, a teacher, which I did get a degree in education. Um, but I think I even started my undergraduate degree in theater and performance and a bachelor of music. So I was trying to still pursue those things. Um, but then eventually I realized that practicing piano just takes up a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, that it does. <laughs> All right, so how do other instruments start to come into the picture? So um, I grew up listening to all kinds of music, mostly classical music um, under my parents' influence, um, pop music, Asian, Western pop music. Um, my parents are both Chinese from Winslow, and um, I'm also uh, trilingual. <laughs> And um, in high school, I started listening, well, high school starting from seventh grade in Australia, I started listening to more pop music, um, learning the guitar by myself. I started singing lessons with Nikki Crayson. And um, when I came to America uh, for my study abroad program in 2016, I started studying the organ as well with uh, Professor Robinson. And so all these experiences really prepared me to understand how to develop a new musical skill which is why when I started learning the theremin, I was able to use all these influences. All right, so how does the theremin come into your life? So at the end of my study abroad, I went to um, a venue in Chicago, and I went to a friend's gig, Joey Polycastro, and the drummer in his trio was playing a mini theremin. And at the time, I had no idea. So during the break, when Joey came up to me, he showed me a video of Clara Rockmore performing the theremin. And I kid you not, I thought that was fake. (laughs) I didn't think it was real. And um, when I went back to Australia, I talked to Dr. Adam Holbert about um, wanting to learn the theremin. I just threw that out there when I was interviewing for a Sonic Arts course. And so Dr. Holbert said, you know, I named my daughter Clara after Clara Rockmore, the theremin virtuoso. And he has a theremin in his office. In fact, he used to, you know, tour playing theremin. So I started borrowing his theremin three times a week and um, learning it by myself. Okay, so for those who cannot see us in studio, describe what the theremin looks like. Okay, so you might have seen this in movies or um, in sci-fi, you know, 
um, pop culture. So it looks like the one I have is a Moog Ether Wave theremin with CV. And it looks like a rectangular wooden box with two antennas, one long one on the right, vertical, and one horizontal curvy one on the left. Uh, the curvy one looks like one of those things you stick in a Weber grill to get it heated up <laughs> to, to start, uh, if people remember that. All right. Um, uh, let's, I think we've waited long enough. Can we, can you play for us now? Of course. Uh, I'd love to. I think this is going to be called uh, Earth Mama, and this is coming up uh, off an upcoming album. Joy Yang is who we are listening to. She's got a computer rigged up to this theremin, uh, so it is a, a richer sound than just one instrument we're going to be hearing. And she is getting the final preparations ready, and here we go. Awesome. I love that. Uh, I've heard theremin in my life before. Back in a, in a previous iteration of my career, I was a stage manager for an orchestra. and I, I could be misremembering, but I think we had a theremin player come in once. But um, I've never heard one glitch like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you, I didn't know you were a stage manager. <laughs> you, you really uh, solve one of the great problems of listening to electronic music live, which is how boring it is to see someone <laughs> hunched over a laptop. Because uh, you have... You're waving your arms around. You're bringing the music out of it. Talk about that. What are you doing with your hands over this instrument? Conjuring magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm moving air with my body, and I'm engaging the electromagnetic fields that are around the theremin. So, the, okay, like the electromagnetic fields, like we had with the aurora that everybody was talking <laughs> about last weekend. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. And that, and you're also, you have a laptop. So some of that was obviously pre-recorded. Um, people can understand that you have the beat making that happens there. Talk about this track. How did this come about? Oh, sure. This is a collaboration with my friend Ryan, also known as Jin Was. So um, we, when we make music together, usually I play the keyboard, then he makes the beats, and then sometimes I sing over it. And today I decided to perform theremin over it. And um, I've collaborated with many people in different genres. And with the theremin, um, I have my own custom signature sounds that I create on Ableton Live, which is a digital audio workstation. Excellent. All right, we are going to take a break. We will come back and talk more with Joy Yang, have another in-studio performance 
on the other side. You're listening to The 21st Show. You're going to open the phone lines if you have a question about the theremin, if you want to join our conversation today. Maybe you've seen one uh, live. Maybe you've heard it. Maybe there's a there's some famous movies that have theremin in the soundtrack, some Hitchcock movies. I think it was Spellbound is one of them, where it's actually a plot point in the movie. Um let us know. 800-222-9455 is the number to join us today. That's 800-222-9455. More with Joy Yang, professional thereminist, founder of the Interdisciplinary Institute in Urbana. This is The 21st Show. Stay with us. This is The 21st Show. I'm Brian Mackey. We are ending our program today talking with and hearing performance from a musician named Joy Yang. She's a pianist and a thereminist. That is a professional theremin player. Uh, She is also the founder of the Interdisciplinary Institute in Urbana. And we're going to hear more from uh, of her performing in a little bit, but but Joy, I want to ask you about um, musical influences. What what do you listen to? If we were to go into your, I don't know, Apple Music, Spotify, whatever your your plat- or CD library, maybe what what, what are you listening to? Uh, that, that well, let's start with that. Thanks, Brian. So I listen to a variety of genres depending on the day and also what performances I have coming up. Um, I listen to jazz, classical music, electronic music, hip-hop, rap, um, folk music, radio stations, um, all kinds of music. And then I have artists within each genre. How does that, how does that broad musical taste um, you know, work its way into the music that you create? So usually every day during my practice session, I have a free improvised um, session where I, it's kind of like a stream of consciousness but with sound. So I freely improvise on my instruments and then I transcribe and notate it. And usually the things that I'm listening to and meditating on, they emerge, which I then later incorporate into my compositions. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm curious. So what is the day in the life of a professional thereminist like? How much time are you spending practicing? What are you you doing with with other elements of your day? Well, usually the ideal day involves um, practicing my various interests, such as like four hours of piano, ideally. And um, 30 minutes to an hour of theremin, and then 30 minutes to an hour of dance and singing, ideally. <laughs> wow. That is, uh, do you ever do you ever have a problem, what's the, there's a German term called uh, Sitzfleisch, which is, uh, I think it's uh, sort of translated loosely as butt in the chair, of making sure that you, you're there every day. Or maybe once you're at level, at your level, it's not a struggle anymore. Um, I guess I've been practicing every day for my whole life since the age of four, so it's wow. been drilled into me pretty thoroughly, even on my birthdays and holidays. Um, but yeah, of course, there's times of rest, and now that I finish my PhD, um, I've taken a bit more time to rest in every now and then. Yeah. Okay. Um, so talk about how you came to be involved. I mentioned uh, the, the laptop. You said it's a piece of software called Ableton. This is uh, pretty widely used by people in the electronic music space. How did you come to make electronic music a part of your life? So I've got to give a shout out to my friend Adam Zykor, who's a producer. Um, he was the first person who introduced me to Ableton Live. And then I got involved with the Electronic Music Club and Production Recording Club here on campus at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And then once I had the software, I just started experimenting and collaborating with people. And then um, Simon Trevax and Adam at UNSW really helped me with um, discovering more VST plugins and effects. Oh, interesting. And would you say, I mean, is it, um, it's not necessarily something people would assume that a, a classical, somebody who's classically trained or even jazz trained would branch into electronic music. What has been like, I wonder what the reception has been like from your piano professors. You know, people who, th- do, do people think it's like, ah, oh, why are you wasting your time with this? Do you ever get that reaction? I, <laughs> I think there's many times in my life when people, they only know me in one way. So when they mm. see something else I do, they get very surprised and shocked. But um, it just keeps happening. So they start getting used to it. 
All right. Well, uh, maybe this is a good time to hear another uh, piece. This is going to be two uh, excerpts um, off your album, Kuroshio. Do you want to talk briefly about how that came about? Sure. So Kuroshio is one of my debut is my debut album with Asian Improv Records released in 2020. And it features Jason Finkelman and Alan Wu. And I play theremin, piano and keyboard on this. And it was also made in collaboration with an artist who was doing live projections with art chemistry. And um, I will be performing excerpts, a Red Cross badge and bereavement with live improvised theremin. Nice. All right. So Joy is going to make her way to her uh, instrument setup again. I have the uh, uh, album cover in front of me. You can, I think, see some of those uh, sort of ink blotch images she was describing here. Very cool. She is getting set up. Um, there's an outline of Japan and I think Korea on the cover here. Uh, I guess that goes well with Asian improv records. And I have a thumbs up. So here we go. These are two excerpts off Kuroshio, we're going to begin with Red Cross Badge and then Bereavement.
Wow. All right. I know talk show hosts say this kind of thing a lot, but I really, really do dig that. That that is a a very uh, a small Venn diagram of, or a, a tightly overlapped Venn diagram of my interest in music. Um, sort of pushing the boundaries of, of new music, electronic sounds, radio sounds almost in the background there. That's really cool. Um, I want to talk about this album because uh, it's a- available for physical purchase. You brought a few copies of the compact disc for the kids out there, CDs as they were known. Um, you can get it digitally on Bandcamp. It's not on streaming platforms. Talk about that decision. Yes, so um, that was made in conjunction with Jason Finkelman and the record label. Um, but I, in my opinion, I think it helps bring more money to the artists directly by selling the physical copies and on platforms like Bandcamp. Say more. For people who may not be familiar with this debate, I guess, is, the, is this like part of the idea that, you know, for Taylor Swift and Beyonce, they can make millions of dollars off the streaming platforms, but everybody else... It's pennies, right? Is, I mean, is that part of the same argument? Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. I mean, I'm not against streaming platforms. I have other um, music on streaming platforms in um, EDM and kind of pop genres and hip hop as well. But I definitely think that um, I've sold a lot of copies of CDs, which has been helpful when people can't just stream it um, directly. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. 800-222-9455. Paul is calling from... Urbana on line two. Paul, thanks for calling in. Sure. Uh, I'll be quick. Um, I've been fortunate enough to see you in your trio a couple of times, but mostly I see you in the improvisers exchange. So I guess that should get a mention. I think it's still every Monday, but I don't know. But my question was, since it's electromagnetic, do you have a signature and do other people have different signatures when approaching it? Or is that you just modulate that by uh, you don't hear anything in that? Like a signature sound, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just, it's... Uh, or like your own, every body is different. Like, is there a... Right. Yeah, oh, I'm interesting. Yeah. Okay, great question, Paul. Thanks. Joy, do you want to take that? Yeah, it's great to hear from you, Paul. And yes, Improvised Exchange is at the Rose Bowl Tavern on the first Mondays of every month, and it has been a crucial part of my journey, um, being part of this class and presenting at it this semester. So um, every person has their own electromagnetic presence and field so whenever you approach the instrument you'll need to tune it differently to your body and in every setting when I play it I have to tune it again depending on the field of the space I'm in. Interesting. We got another question uh, somebody wanted to know about the record label on which you released this album the uh, Kuroshio album it's called Asian Improv Records talk about that an Asian label. So um, our record on this label celebrates our um, shared Asian descent. And so for me, this label has been really significant to release on, um, being one of the first labels to represent Asian Americans in jazz music. And I'm really excited to release my next label with them in November, This uh, next CD with them in November this year with the Joy Yang Trio. So talk about that. Say, say more. What, what is next for you, this, this album you've mentioned a couple of times now? Yes, so I'd love to share it. It's called Live On, featuring Joy Yang, Ori Sergal, and Mitchell Maftin. And it's dedicated to the life and memory of my good friend, Joshua Bell. Nice. Do you want to say more about him? Um, well, uh, Joshua Bell was a fantastic um, jazz pianist, and he also sang and um, played melodica and inspired me a lot in my musical journey. Lovely. All right, so I don't know, do you want to... Can do you want to play one more time? I don't know if you do want to do any improv. Yeah. All right. We're going to go out with that. Um, I will let you get started, and then I will sort of do our normal goodbyes in a, in a few minutes here uh, as we're coming to the end of the show. Joy Yang is a professional thereminist. She is a pianist as well, multi-instrumentalist. Maybe we can just say that. Also founder of the Interdisciplinary Institute. We didn't really have time to get into that. Maybe we can talk about that. Uh, in the future, but we're going to listen to her one more time. Joy Yang on Theremin and MacBook Pro running Ableton Live.
That's all the time for us today. The 21st Show is a production of Illinois Public Media. I'm Brian Mackey. Thanks for listening. We'll talk with you again on Monday.